This is step two in a sequence of screencasts looking at the creation of gap fill exercises in Word. So the easiest way to do that is to take an existing piece of text or to write a, um, a piece of text that you want to use and then what I do is I underline and make bold the words that I want to become part of the gap fill. That makes life a lot easier uh, later on. So here I've got a piece of text and for example I've underlined the word Land Ranger. So what I'm going to do now is make this into a, a gap fill. I need to have the developer tab shown and if that doesn't show up automatically you need to go to the Microsoft button, word options and then tick that box there that says show developer tab. But assuming it's showing, that's great. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight the word Land Ranger and I've actually got a space a before it and after it which is also underlined and that's actually uh, quite important. Under the developer tab, um, this little uh, symbol here is for legacy tools. These are the tools that were available in earlier versions of, of Word and they're actually what we want to use. Now I want to use the drop down uh, option which is this icon here and if I hover over it, it should tell me what it is. And what it will do is it will put this sort of box where my cursor was which was over the word Land Ranger. What I'm then going to do is right click and go to properties and this is where I add the items for my list. Now the clever thing that I do is I'm going to start off with a line of spaces which I'm going to add. So my first item is a load of spaces. The reason I've done that is when I print it that will be the default and it will basically print me with a blank which is underlined so that when I print the, the document out um, I can then still use it as a printed version. I then need to add in my next set of items. Uh, so just do that, click on add So it's very quick to add your items into your list and you can then rearrange the order if you wish. I generally will have things listed in alphabetical order because I find that's just a more... Uh, the students then don't work out some sort of pattern. If you do it in alphabetical order for everything then it's always going to be that order and they don't know which one's the right answer. So it's very quick and you see there it's created that box based on the length of the uh, number of spaces I included in that first one. So I'll quickly do another one. So again here I've got my colour pink. So legacy tools, drop down form field and then I right click and I go to properties and I do a line of spaces for my first one add, I'm then going to do um, green you can actually press enter rather than clicking on the button if it's quicker pink, yellow ok, so I'll click on ok for that at the bottom here I've got three that I pre-prepared and because the uh, the answers in this are all the same I just create one and I just copy it and paste it for the, th for the other two so it's a quicker way of doing it. Now there's a couple other things to note this little icon here which is shading normally when you do this you, your boxes appear grey but the problem with that is when you print it out it's then prints in grey and that's then quite hard to actually write on so I tend to take that off so that it doesn't do grey. What we then need to do is we need to click on this protect document option and then tick to say restrict formatting and editing. What that will do is it will bring up this little pane on the right hand side and what we can do here is on this drop down box here we need to change it to filling in forms okay because that's what we're doing is we're creating a form and then we need to start enforcing protection so what we do when we do that is it brings up this little window uh, where you can enter a password now I personally, if I'm creating teaching resources, will often not put in a password, I'll leave it blank. And the reason I do that is it's then very easy for me to come back in and change it later on. If I put a password in, I've got to remember what that password is. And if I forget what that password is, I then can't edit the document. And that becomes an, an inconvenience. Okay, if it's, if it's mega, mega important that students don't edit the rest of the document, then you can password it. But if it's just something like this, I generally leave it blank. So I click on OK. So what's happened now is... Um, the students, all they can click on are the options. They can't click anywhere else, they can only click on the options that you're altering. Now the one problem with this is it always puts a, a little arrow which blocks the next bit of text. So a little tip that I use, I'm going to stop protection, is I'm going to add a little field for the name. So I'm going to go back to my legacy tools and I'm going to add a text field. Okay, so that's now put a place there where the student can enter their name. And the beauty of that, again I've got to start enforcement, okay, is I can now have that selected when I save it so that these lines don't show up. So that's a very quick introduction to how we can use forms in Word to create a gap fill exercise.